Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about using Zotero as a way to capture a literature note from a video resource. I think it's really important to use a structured approach to note taking and that that structure is probably going to be different depending on the nature of the resource that you're trying to extract information from. So I'm going to start first of all by explaining what a literature note is in case you're not familiar. Literature notes are the synthesis of thoughts and observations taken while reading or watching or listening to a resource. Um, I think that they could be, uh, should be kept separate to the permanent note because literature notes are the thoughts of the author, while the permanent notes are something that emerge for you after you've processed those thoughts and internalized them. Um, they should include your responses to the author's claims as well as relationships to other notes and ideas that emerge as you're engaging with the resource. And I like to think of literature notes as the raw data that I'm going to use to build on and expand my collection of permanent notes. So for more information about different kinds of notes, you might want to read this book by Zonka Arendt called How to Take Smart Notes. I thought it was really uh, insightful and um, very helpful for, for the academic work that I do. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Zotero, then that's probably going to be the first thing that you are going to do. You'll need to go to zotero.org. And once you're there, you'll download Zotero and install it. And once it ins it's installed, you'll see something like this uh, without any of the information in the central panel. So this isn't a, a tutorial on using Zotero. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how it works. Other than this panel in the middle here is where all of your uh, resources and references are going to show up um, with the uh, metadata included here on the right hand side. So before we carry on, you might want to go to install the browser connector. If you click on that, it'll take you to a page in Zotero. You install the browser connector and what that does is it adds a little icon up here which allows you to import information to Zotero from any resource that you're accessing through your browser. If you don't run Firefox, then you can install connectors for other browsers down here. We'll close that and that. So. Today I'm going to be looking at this video by Julia Galef. It's a TED talk. It's called Why You Think You're Right Even If You're Wrong. Now I'm familiar with Julia because of her Rationally Speaking podcast, which I subscribe to. And if we look here at Zotero, you'll see that I actually have um, a podcast recording captured in Zotero between Julia Galef and David Mannheim on uh, Goodhart's Law. So I already know that there's at least one item in my library um, from Julia. I'm also interested in uh, Julia because she's just published a book called The Scout Mindset. If you go to openlibrary.org and you search for Scout Mindset, you'll see that information. And so what I want to do is I want to pull this information into Zotero. So uh, the Zotero icon will change depending on the resource that you're looking at. So here it looks like a book. And I'm going to save the metadata of this book into my library in Zotero. If I go to Zotero now, you'll see there it is. It's pulled in all of this metadata information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, relate that information to the podcast that I've already got in, uh, captured and then I'm also going to save this TED talk now you see now it's a video icon and that's also going to be saved presenter is Gallif Julia all right I'm also going to capture this information. And I'm going to add that to that abstract. All right. And uh, I'm also going to relate this video To everything else that Julia has done. All right, so now you can see that this presentation by Julia Galliff at TED is linked to the Scout Mindset that she's written and on this podcast that she did with David Mannheim. All right, but today we're interested in uh, this TED presentation. I'm going to add TED there so long. 
going to create a note and I'm going to say edit in a separate window. So what that does is it pops out this little note taking panel. I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to bring this note taking panel over here and uh, your operating system will, will be different but on Linux I've set this to have a little icon up here that I can click and now this note taking panel will always be on top of any window that I um, am looking at. So if I'm looking at uh, Firefox you can see that my notes stay on top. I'm just going to call this my notes and I think now I'm ready to start watching. So let's go. Actually, I should mention uh, while I'm watching, I'm going to increase the playback speed. So, I'd like you to imagine for a moment that you're a soldier in the heat of battle. Maybe you're a Roman foot soldier, or a medieval archer, or maybe you're a Zulu warrior, regardless of your time. So, I'm going to start by saying war metaphors That's something that she seems to be taking on board in place there's some things that are constant your adrenaline is elevated and your actions are stemming from these deeply ingrained reflexes reflexes rooted in a need to protect yourself and your side and to defeat the enemy so i think i see where she's going she's using uh, she's talking about war metaphors and linking a state of mind to how we think, perceive things. So now I'd like you to imagine playing a very different role, that of the scout. So the scout's job is not to attack or defend. The scout's job is to understand. The scout is the one going out. Scout equals understanding, not fighting. Mapping the terrain, uh, identifying potential obstacles, and the scout may hope to learn that, say, there's understanding and information gathering. Okay, so if I think about this, um, she's obviously this is a TED talk. She's going to be presenting some of the ideas that she's expanding in more detail in the book, The Scout Mindset. She's talking about a perspective or a frame of mind that we bring to things like decision making, maybe negotiation, um, maybe just a way of thinking rationally about the world, um, uh, a way of understanding our own position with respect to positions that we may not always agree with. And so I can see where this is going. Um, Gallif is talking about uh, adopting a soldier's mindset where we take the position that we are right and we have to defend our beliefs. We have to attack other people's um, arguments. Whereas a scout mindset might be more about gathering information, reflecting, thinking, trying to understand someone else's position. Um, so I, I like this. I think that this is going to be a useful framework to take forward. Let's carry on. A bridge in a convenient location across a river. But above all, the scout wants to know what's really there as accurately as possible. All right. So the scout, understanding and information gathering, not fighting, but predominantly occupied with seeing what is there. I'm going to italicize that, seeing what is really there. And in a, a real, actual army, uh, both the soldier and the scout are essential. But you can also think of each of these roles as uh, a mindset, a metaphor for how all of us process. Okay, so I think I've got enough to maybe go back to Zotero. I'm going to move this out the way. I'm going to start adding some tags. Metaphor, perspective, decision making, argument, negotiation, um, information, gathering. So you can see how I'm 
I'm starting to link the notes that I'm taking with uh, tags that I'm adding to the other metadata in, in Zotero. All right, let's go back to the video. Information and ideas in our daily lives. And what I'm gonna argue today is that having good judgment, making accurate predictions, uh, making good decisions is mostly about which mindset you're in. Okay, so good judgment. Accurate decisions are partly related to your mindset. Having a defensive mindset may not be a good position to understanding, to move. So you can see how I'm not trying to capture exactly what Gallif is saying in the presentation. I'm listening to what she's saying and I'm trying to interpret that in my own words. So I'm writing them in my own words. This is the literature note that I'm taking. And as part of this literature note, I'm already starting to think how does this connect to other ideas that I'm thinking about. <clears throat> To illustrate these mindsets in action, I'm going to take you back to 19th century France, where this innocuous looking piece of paper launched one of the biggest political scandals in history. It was discovered in 1894 by officers in the French general staff, and it was torn up in a waste paper basket, but when they pieced it back together, they discovered that someone in their ranks had been selling military secrets to Germany. So they launched a big investigation, and their suspicions quickly converged on this man, Albert Dreyfus. He had a sterling record, no past history of wrongdoing, no motive as far as they could tell, but Dreyfus was the only Jewish officer at that rank in the army. Uh, and unfortunately, at this time, the French army was uh, highly anti-Semitic. So they compared Dreyfus's handwriting to that on the memo and concluded that it was a match, uh, even though outside professional handwriting experts were much less confident in the similarity. But never mind that. Okay, so what she's doing at the moment is she's using an example to talk about how different mindsets lead to different outcomes. So I, I know the story of this. Um, the, this. This man, Alfred Dreyfus, he was put into prison. He was wrongfully accused. He ended up not being the, um, the spy that they were concerned about in the, in the army. Um, but it didn't matter. The, the people who were involved in, in the trial, they didn't see what was in front of them. They had a preconceived idea and that was informed by this kind of soldier mindset that, that they had. And so Dreyfus talks about a, um, a, a, a new um, commander that came into the army with a different mindset and reinvestigated the trial and um, set this man free, Alfred Dreyfus uh, free. Um, and so all, all that she's doing here is she's using an example to talk about um, how different mindsets lead to different outcomes. So I'm not going to capture any of this information because that particular historical incident is not really of much interest to me, um, other than uh, you, she's using it as an example to reinforce her ideas. So I'm gonna skip forward a little bit because I'm not really interested in the details of that example. Okay, so she's used that example, she's finished it, and now um, she's moving on to something else. There's another thing that I uh, quite uh, often do when I'm watching videos, and that's if I see a picture um, that is being presented that I want to capture for uh, later reference. That's okay. I'll use my other screenshot tool. All right. Oh, all right. I'll put it on the desktop. Didn't automatically save it. Uh, there it is. And so now I've got that screenshot captured as part of my reference. So if I click on that, it opens the screenshot. So I think that's another really useful way to capture information. Soldier's mindset.
Now, as I'm thinking about this, I'm also um, I'm also reminded of something that Daniel Dennett uh, talks about um, in the context of an argument. Um, now, I actually want to see. I've maybe made a note about this in the past. Critical commentary. So I do have a note on critical commentary. You can see it's not a very well structured note. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yeah, link to Dennett's framework for criticizing the ideas of others. But you can see how now I've started to think a little bit more expansively. I'm not only looking at what Gallup is talking about. I'm actually trying to find connections with other ideas that I'm aware of. So I might start putting together a note that's related to argument <clears throat> from a philosophical perspective. And then I might start bringing in some of Gallup's ideas into that note, as well as Dennett's. I think there are also some other notes that I have in my collection of permanent notes that relate to this idea of, um, of building arguments. So you can see how my literature note isn't just a, um, a, a snapshot of the presentation that I'm watching. The whole point of it is while I'm watching, I'm already uh, thinking about ways that this information connects to uh, other, other ideas, other concepts. Shape the way we interpret information. So some information, some ideas feel like our allies and we want, we want them to win, we want to defend them. And other information or ideas are the enemy and we want to shoot them down. So uh, this is why I call motivated reasoning soldier mindset. And probably most of you have never persecuted a French Jewish officer for high treason, I assume, uh, but maybe you've followed sports or politics. So you might have noticed that uh, when the referee judges that your team committed a foul, for example, uh, you're highly motivated to find reasons why he's wrong. But if he judges that the other team committed a foul, awesome, it's a good call, let's not examine... I'm going to say our beliefs and biases influence our behavior. Um, or maybe you've read an article or a study that's examined some controversial policy, like capital punishment. And as researchers have demonstrated, if, if you support capital punishment and the study shows that it's not effective, um, then you're highly motivated to find all the reasons uh, why the study was poorly designed. But if it shows that capital punishment works, awesome, it's a good study. And vice versa, if you don't support... And obviously this is also linked to confirmation bias equals seeing data that support our beliefs. So I'm going to go back to Zotero now. Back to the tags. I'm going to add confirmation bias, beliefs, behavior. I'm going to put Dennett in here as well just because it is connected. So I'm, I'm looking for relationships between ideas. Um, this is less about a, a, a short series of keywords that I'm going to use to find something and more about creating connections um, between other concepts. So I think I'm going to stop there. The way that I think about note taking is um, uh, is very specific, <clears throat> especially around literature notes. The idea isn't to capture everything that the speaker is saying or that I'm seeing in the video. I've showed how I use screenshots to capture additional information. So if there's something that's visual that uh, gets my attention, I do want to bring that into my collection of resources. I want to associate it with the video that I'm watching. Um, but yeah, the idea isn't that I want this to be a transcript. I'm going to close this now. So you can see I've got this uh, note. I've got all of this metadata. And, um, you know, I'd, I'll obviously carry on watching the, the video and uh, adding information to my notes. And so the idea is that over time you build up this collection of resources, this library of related information that includes um, your own perspective as part of the notes that you've taken, as well as tags that you've added that make the, the, the relationship to your own knowledge um, and um, collection of ideas a little bit more um, uh, solid. I hope that this has been useful. 
If you think that uh, you would enjoy uh, m more videos related to these kinds of ideas, uh, please subscribe to the channel and um, obviously the more people who subscribe and, and like the video, the more motivated I'll be to, to keep doing this kind of work. Thanks very much. Bye.